people always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right, guys, we are back, and our heads are squished because we're wearing earphones. I feel like my face looks fatter than normal. Does my face look fatter? Do I look like a chipmunk? No, I don't think so. But you made me have my own stupid microphone. Can you hear her? I can hear her great. I feel like I'm way louder than you are now. That, no. I feel I, that it's louder to me in my headphones. Well, I can turn your headphones Mine. down. I can turn I your headphones yours. down. I'm good. Look at this. So then it still makes, then I can't hear anything. Okay. So it still makes you, it makes you quieter too. Good. Trust me. Everybody wants to hear what I have to say. But oh, I want to hear what you have to say because you're awesome. Hello, you've ruined my thing now. I can't. Hello. Are you good? Yeah, please. So, guys, here's what's happened. We started recording at 5.30 tonight. It is now 8.30 tonight, and we are just getting started. We are like one minute into the podcast. What's going on tonight, Natalie? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> I can hear you so good. Don't don't poo poo it. It's great. I I'm love not it. Poo pooing it, but I'm louder than you now. Go. You're doing great. Go. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened. Everything was screwy. We tried to get somebody on the podcast. He would be up, but we wouldn't be up. Then we would be up, and we could hear him, but he wouldn't be up. And and then we could hear and talk, but then our camera would go off. Right. That's what I said. And my little girl came in here, and she's pushing buttons, and she's like. She was sure she could figure it out. I know how to do it, Dad. You, your camera's off. Boy, that, that mutes it. Your microphone's off. No, you can't see me. Yeah, you can't see. Well, honey, she just wanted to, she wanted to be the hero so bad. Yeah. I remember my dad had a video store, and they would have sales meetings. Because Dad had one location, but there was like six locations of video box office. And Dad would bring his little son to work, and they have to go to that business meeting with all the other franchises. And they looked at me one day. The meeting was over. And I'm sitting in the corner twiddling my thumbs. You didn't have iPhones. You didn't have anything to do. Who knows what I was doing in the corner. And they looked at me, Wes, and they said, Wes, do you have anything to add to this meeting? Yeah. If you make the area where the kids check out movies more fun, maybe kids would want to come there and beg their parents to go there because parents go where their kids beg them to go. Ah, huh, that's a good idea. And they were like, that was awesome. And I, everybody was like praising me and pat me on the back. <laughs> they put in a fenced area in the biggest location uh -huh. and it made it like a play zone. So mom and dad could shop, you know, like uh, once upon a child has that fenced in area for the babies. Uh -huh. That's what they put in the video store. So the kids could go back there and play and mom and dad could just look. I mean, they were only 13 feet away, right? but they could play and come back and get their, still had an eye I got patted on the back and everything. And I was like, yeah. You know what else you got, Wes? That's it. I'm tapped out. I was, <laughs> I was ten. I was ten years old. That was my idea. But anyway, so I'll tell everybody here. We had Dave McGee on, and we worked with him for 45 minutes, and couldn't get more of a nicer of an angel than him, because he was like, "It's probably my fault. I'm not good with technology. It's not you, Dave. I I don't know what it is. We got tech support on here. We were trying to figure it out." We're adding the microphones. We're doing all this because Natalie's sound, my sound, when other people have ambiance sound, and Dave McGee had water running in the background. He that's was outside in his garden that had like has like a pool and all sorts like of stuff. Like a koi pond with running water. Right. And that's why we immediately grabbed the microphones. We're like, nope, we know how to fix this because our microphones aren't going to pick up his running water, and maybe we can just get it going. Right. Because that was the problem recently. Yeah. We are trying everything to get this to work and then we said well let's sign off and we're going to try and figure it out and then we'll let you know when we're ready and he's like well i have this thing tonight so um we i kind of like, have to work right so we we're like okay well let's do this next week then and he was like okay that's great so uh, he is very sweet working with us not upset that we couldn't figure it out so but i think we figured it out right we might have Dave McGee next week. We'll find out next week. <laughs> so then we were like, all right, well, we've been on here two weeks in a row. Natalie, what are we going to talk about? 
So during dinner, we put a whole bunch of stuff together. But I got to tell you guys, in uh, researching Dave McGee for tonight's episode, go back and listen to Dave's episode. Um, it was pretty awesome, even though there was a ton of technical difficulties. And his was unique that we've never seen before. Right. This was back when we were just doing it over the phone. No video. It was all just phone calls. And tell him what his phone was doing. I've never so heard every of this. Time, every time his screen went dark, his microphone turned off. So we couldn't hear him. And we were like, what happened? Hello, hello. And then I guess he would fidget with his phone to try and figure out what was going on. And it would come back on and then we could hear him. And we are like, I don't understand what's going on. Now, he does live in Mexico. So we were like, well, I don't know, international call? He's like, I've never had issues with international calls before. And then he figured it out probably halfway into the, what'd you say? About halfway into the thing. He's like, oh my gosh, it's my fault. And we're like, what? I got to keep the screen on. <laughs> so he had to keep like, his oh. finger on the phone the whole time. Yeah. But so. maybe it was because it was on speakerphone. I don't know. I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, but. But anyway. we've never had that issue before. That was unique. That was different. And it's yeah. like, how do you do? How do you know what other people are doing? How do you know what other things are going on? Right. Maybe they do have a fan going. I hear a fan. Is there a fan near you? No. Well, if it's not on screen, it could be right in his face, and I can't see him or hear him. Right. Yeah. So we're we're obviously we're still learning. And After trying, five years. Yes. Well, we keep having to change formats. That and wasn't our fault. Spotify got bought out. Yeah. And changed over to this other company. Right. We tried Zoom, but we had issues right. with Zoom. I don't remember what the issues were now. I don't know. But it does great. When Zoom we can... couldn't upload to this, to all the things oh. the way I wanted to. That's what oh. it was. Well, anyway, so we switched over to the new thing so we could stay on Spotify. And then then we were having issues with that tonight. And I, But anyway, we think we may have figured it out. We will find out next week when we try and do this thing. I'm telling you, I need you to set up a date, and we'll just do it again and just try it. Oh, I, I asked him if he could do same time next week. No, I'm saying me and you set up a date and just try it one time before we get him on. Oh. You think? I thought you think it doesn't matter? earlier. And we got it working. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, we can do it again if you want to, but I thought we Fingers crossed. We got it all figured out, folks. We got it all figured out. Anyway, um... I have crazy, weird, out of the blue news to tell you guys about, oh, but yeah. I, I'm gonna let Natalie tell you because oh. I don't, I don't even know, I don't know how much to say because I say too much. I'm very so. Here's something about me: if you know anything about me, if you're my friend, I talk, I tell you everything. You ask how much a show is, I tell you as much as I know. Nowadays, I don't know how much a show is. I had a friend of mine come over the other day. We played in the backyard. We shot guns. We threw axes. We shot the shotgun. He said, I feel chest hair coming. I told you. I told you. Did you hear him say that? Yeah. He said, I feel like I had chest hair growing. That's a testosterone boost. You shoot that shotgun. But he came over and he was asking. I mean, he's a college kid. But he was like, well, how much do you make a year? How much do you make per show? I honestly don't know because you know all those numbers. But if I know, I would. But then, all right, if you really want to know, just call Natalie pretend you're setting up a show. You don't even have to do that. Just ask. And I she'll tell you how much we charge. I don't care about telling you how much you, you But it also you matters. Know, I will, yeah, I will but it also you know. matters how big the show is and right. where it's located. There's a big range of different size shows, and it depends on where you're having your show as far as how much travel we charge you. Yeah, so, I mean, there's variables. It depends on, I mean... But her family had a rule that they don't talk money. My family never had that, or I never knew about it. You know, I never asked my parents how much money they made. But um, it either. was it was one of those things where her family was that. like, oh, well, if it's a high number, you're bragging. And if it's a low number, why aren't you doing better? And it's a negative either way. And I was like, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I have no idea. I yeah. thought you guys had like a rule. You don't talk money among friends and family or something. Oh, well, I mean, I think. I Is think, that just a generic thing? I think that's a pretty widespread thing because you start talking money and either people are you know jealous, jealous or 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 oh pff, you know it just puts a rift kind of in a relationship sometimes for people that really care about that kind of thing 
me, I'm like, oh, you don't make as much? Okay, that's okay. Are you happy in what you're doing? Well, then good. Keep going. Oh, you make may way more than me? Well, congratulations. Uh, you know, like, that's yeah. great. Awesome. Uh, it's it's all in I think it's all in is if you do you like your job do you like what you're doing and keep doing it but anyway yeah. no so I have several Facebook groups that I run I have one for this podcast Wes Isley's Magic Life Facebook podcast group find it every episode I if we talk about the kids or talk about the kids birthday or the dinosaur trip I'll put pictures of uh, them at the dinosaur park and things and it goes along with it when i have magicians i'll put the magician's website in there i put videos of theirs in there i try to keep it i'm trying to keep the episodes alive and living online don't have a website for the podcast itself you can get links to that off of westizely.com but i try to keep it alive i also have a magician's facebook group where i put magic up every day and i also started a group where you um if you need a guest for your podcast or you want to become a guest for a podcast uh you can join this Facebook group and you can put your one sheets out. And It was f a way for me to find people in other areas because I only know magic. So that's where we got the potty training lady at. We got, I know we got a couple of the health people. The lady that came on, I can't remember her name at this point, but she was the one that had like a, a 30 minute work day. You know, instead of the four hour work day, she's like, get all your emails done and don't check them again. You tell people you check them once a day, but check oh, your right, emails yeah. once a day. You have a, yeah, you have a schedule. I check my emails at this time and this time. And that's so, it. Yeah. But that, she was so, I couldn't keep to her schedule. I couldn't, she was so rigid in her thing. Yeah, but she's not going out and doing shows, though, either at random times. So, like, you can say, we check our email at noon and at five every day. Yesterday, that never would have happened. No, we weren't. Because we were gone all day. Yeah. Yeah, so... It is what it is. I don't know but, how... I want to know Penn Jillette's thing. I, I email him, and he answers within five minutes at max. I bet he doesn't if you emailed him when he's on stage. Oh, absolutely. Right, absolutely. Exactly. I know what his schedule is. I don't email him on stage. Right. But anyway, so out of the blue, this uh, podcast group that I run, some guy contacted and said, have you ever thought about advertising or just outright selling it? No. Never thought about it. All right. Well, uh, think about it. And I'll give you an offer on Monday. Yeah. And we were like, well, this is weird. I never, I, neither one of it, I, it's a thing, apparently. I, neither one of us have ever heard of anybody selling a Facebook group. So, Wes Googled it, and he was like, how much do you typically get for selling a Facebook group? And I guess the average is about a penny per member of the group. And Wes had over 14,000 members. But that only equals about $140. And I was like, well, if that's his offer, I wouldn't worry about it. Tell him you'd rather, if he wants to advertise, great. But I wouldn't. It's $140. And you've worked hard on this podcast group for years. And you're getting podcast guests off of it. It's not worth it for $140. Well, he came back with an offer that was not $140. And so... We couldn't pass it up, and so it has been sold. As of, what, 30 minutes ago, the deal has gone through. <laughs> it was one of those things where, all right, well, is he going to, is it some kind of scam where they're going to get my computer information? They're going to get my, they're going to get access to my whole Facebook account because I have hundreds of thousands of members between my six Facebook accounts I have, all the different groups that I run. I don't know how many members it is, 100,000? Now he's going to have access to that. He's going to shut down all that. I don't no, know. But no, that's not what it was at all. It was just. He went through an escrow account. Yeah, that was. Yeah. And so the escrow account <laughs> holds the money that he puts in. And then we have to sign up, obviously, for the escrow thing. And then it's like, OK, well, next step is handing over the merchandise. And once you do that, you each click a button. And so um, it was just pretty much giving him making him the administrator and taking yourself off as administrator and everybody clicks the button and then the escrow is like, okay, your money is coming. And so we're like, okay, well that was easy. And now I'm telling Wes, go make more Facebook groups, make them big, make them great, get more offers. This is awesome. <laughs> but I also manicured that thing. There was good people in there. You yeah. know, I didn't let scammers in there. I didn't let people advertise in there. And it was, it's a, it's a cold group. So it's like they're buying an email list. Right. But uh, 
Yeah. I, I was I, shocked. Like, when we got the offer, I was like, this is a scam. And Wes was like, no, I looked up the thing. I was like, I'm going to look it up. I, this is, you missed something. You missed something. We looked up the company. We verified the company. We looked the up the company. Yeah. And it, it's a real thing. And so I was like, okay, well, yeah. And, and, and I told him, I said, what's the worst thing that could happen, even if it was a scam? Nothing. It's not like we're putting money in the game. We're not We're not going, yeah, here, here's $200 for you to give us your amount. Oh, yeah, the yeah. escrow charges money. They pay the escrow they pay count. They fees. Yeah. yeah. So, win, 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 win. I think we came out pretty good on the deal. I'm happy. Are you happy? As long as you're happy, honey. <laughs> two years of work down the drain. No, two years of work just paid off. Think about it that way. You know, I'm not. I'm not sad at all. No, I didn't I'm think you would be. I'm not sad a bit. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you guys money. I do. I really do. No, um. No. So besides that, and that's just been, that's been a roller coaster because it's like I wanted to. It'll be real when the money gets in the account. Is it real now? No. Is it real now? No. An escrow company lets you know every step of the way. It was right. like a five-step process. Yeah. They have the money. The money's yeah. been verified. You've been verified. Yeah. You've been verified. All your your stuff has been verified. Hand over the thing. He says, yes, I got it. Okay. Deal closed. You're getting the money. Right? But we got to email each time, and then the right. guy was emailing, asking questions, and yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool, I think. You just I never, never knew, knew. and I never knew. Like I, who in the world knew that people bought Facebook groups? And the reason I started that group, do I need another group? No. The reason I started it was because you have to scroll through so much junk when you're looking for a podcast guest, right? You know, I have people reach out to me that I've never heard of. That I don't, I'm not sure they speak English. I'm not sure I'll be able to understand them. If I'm talking to somebody for an hour on the podcast and it sounds like they're I'm on a call tree with what's our company? What's our cell phone company? No, what's our what's our cable company? Oh, the they're bright, the worst. Bright speed. Oh, they're the worst. They're they have the worst accent. You can't understand them. Yeah. I would hate to have an hour long interview with somebody from there, right? Yeah. So I can verify these people. I can check them out. I can listen to some of their podcast episodes and hear that they can actually talk and hold us and not go, uh-huh, uh-uh. You're not yeah. going to be pulling teeth the whole time trying right. to get them to speak. And right. there was one Facebook group that um, it looks awesome. It's not a Facebook group. It's an email list I still get. And the guy gives you like 10 amazing business people each week, like NFL football players and, you know, two-bit actors, whatever, you know, not like Academy Award winning actors, but people you may have heard of. Okay. I would love that. And when you email them, you never hear from them because that email list is so huge. They've been overwhelmed by 300 emails that morning. Everybody wants you on your podcast. Yeah. I got on that list after a three-month waiting period. I was on the list. So I know what it's like on the backside. I got like 400 emails. Please be on my podcast that day. Or I would like to be on your podcast because I did it both ways. Yeah. And it is so it's over. It's so overwhelming. Yeah. And then the Facebook group was more conversational. Anyway, yeah. you guys might not even care about this, but it's really cool, and that's why I did it, and that's why I did it. Yeah. And that's why I did it, and that's why I did it. <laughs> Are you making fun of me yeah, now? A little bit. All right. Anyway, all right. So next, we have a whole list of stuff to talk about. Tell everybody about yesterday's show. And let me just let me just do a caveat, okay? Okay. I'm gonna tell everybody who it was for okay. and what it was for. Okay. Right? Our friend, who has become a good friend of ours now, yeah. Heather Spence, mm -hmm. we know her mom, we know her dad, we know her, we know her in-laws now. Mm -hmm. um, she wants me to teach the dolphins magic in Cancun. Right, she was on our podcast. We're going to work with the dolphins. We know her family. Right. My brother loves her son. She invited the brother to the party yesterday. Right. We did a party for her little girl that was turning five years old. Yes. Family, kids, birthday party. But it's a family show. Right. They had like eight kids and like 18 adults, yeah, something, something like that. that. They had it out in a park up in Northern Virginia. That's where they're from. And so we get up there and it is, it's cold, but there's nothing you can do about that. And it is windy. Like 
windy. So you much so, a, if it was a regular customer, I might have had to cancel the show. Right. And just said, hey, we can't do we this. We can't do this. This is impossible. Because we have a heavy case that we put on top of our table, and that case was getting moved by the wind. The, the silver case. It was being moved by the wind. It's a metal suitcase. It was windy. Very, very windy. So we had, you know, I mean, anyway, we, we buckled down and we did it. But in our contract, it says you need a backup plan for if it's really windy or if it's raining. And so she was like, well, if it's raining, we'll just, we'll have to reschedule. And I'm like, that's fine. Your deposit lasts for this long, blah, 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 blah. We can reschedule as long as you work with us in our schedule. And, um, but the windy part, the windy part, they didn't want to cancel for wind. So we get there and we're setting up and it's, it's insane wind, rough wind. I, I think it might've gotten a little windy around here, but nothing like was what was up there. And, uh, but we, we did it anyway. We were holding stuff down and we were throwing things like under the table. Cause we had a tablecloth that I pinned down by the table and put stuff under the table so that it wouldn't fly away. And just, we didn't have the normal stuff on the table. I just was putting heavy stuff on the table to keep the tablecloth on. And it was just, it was crazy, but they all enjoyed it. They liked it very much. Got lots of compliments afterwards. You know, and like, that's a great show. I don't know how you did it in high winds. That was amazing. So it was not our show. We were, was, we, yeah, we were jumping around trying to fix stuff so much. We didn't feel at like one it point, was that great of a show, but apparently they didn't mind it. So I have a picture that I hold up of me winning Fool Us that I talk about during the show. Yeah. And it's eight and a half by 11 on cardboard and it's laminated. And that thing was clipped on a bulldog clip. Right. And it wiggled in the wind and took off across the park. Yep. And like, we well, were like, we can't put that there. <laughs> no. I mean, it was just, it was everything. Yeah. Um, but it, this reminds me, I don't even know if you know this. There's a magician named Michael Trix who performs in uh, South Florida, mm. like oceanfront at the resorts. Oh, that's got to be windy. On the deck every night at like 7 p.m. at sunset. And he does a dove act with silks. In high wind. Oh my goodness. All of his silks have fishing weights glued, you know, like sewn oh. into them. But he's prepared. He has a whole show he knows with how, that. Yeah, right. He, he knows it's going to be windy. So he's got it all set. But it's not fun for the audience. When I left yesterday, um, I'm driving down the road. My contact fell out. My other eye, I could hardly see. I had dirt in my eyes. Right. It was cold. It was miserable. The audience... One guy in the front row sat there with his hands in his pocket like this, the whole show, <laughs> just um, for the listener, sorry, but his hands are in his pocket, he's clinching, yeah. and he's grimacing, the, the whole show, no matter what, I, I'm producing doves, and he's grimacing, uh, he just, it was miserable, it was cold. cold. It was cold, yeah, it was cold, and I, I and had the looked wind at the was weather, relentless. and I had looked at the weather, because I was like, you know, there's been a couple chilly days, and then there's been really nice warm days, so I looked at the weather before heading out. And I was like, well, it says it's going to be 65. It said nothing about wind. And I looked up where we were going. I looked up the weather for up in, in Arlington. And it just said 65. And I was like, well, that's not bad. But I think, I think I'll wear my boots anyway, cover my toes, not, not worry about sandals. But I still had a short sleeve shirt on. But it was a little chilly when we left, but it's supposed to warm up. So I brought my jacket just in case, you know, for the ride, you know. For right then, I didn't think I'd need it when we got there. But the wind made it so much colder. I think it would have been okay temperature wise. Oh, it would have been great temperature. If it hadn't been the wind blowing, the wind made it colder. I wish that my weather app would have said it's windy. So the other thing was uh, she gave us like Google Earth directions or whatever directions to the place. I looked it up on I Google guess. Earth. Yeah. And it looked. On Google Earth, it looked like the park was Central Park in New York. Yeah, all you saw was trees. And she's like, this parking lot, it's a Monday. It won't be busy. You could probably bring the RV and trailer in. You can park on the street if you have to. There was no parking on the street. There was no parking in that parking lot. 
Um, it was a it was a smaller parking lot, and so we ha- when we looked up on Google Earth, we were like, well, we would have to luck out and get so many spaces in a row to be able to park there, and um, it would have been miserable. Yeah, it would have been. We wouldn't have fit. It was it was Columbus Day, so I guess a lot of people had off work and everything, and it was busy. We wouldn't have fit, so we we just decided to take our a car anyway instead of the RV and trailer. So we ended up leaving Willow and the boys at home. And stuffing my car with the show, with Lana in the back and me and Wes in the front, obviously. And then, um, yeah, so that worked. But yeah, we didn't end up parking in the parking lot. We came up, they, they let us up a little access road that was right there, close to the pavilion. But yeah, it was huge. I didn't, I mean, you're in the parking lot, you're like, I don't see a pavilion anywhere. Well, well. Where's the pavilion? And I love her. But she did the classic mom thing at a party. The classic mom thing at a party. And when we book shows, any show, we say have a phone on in oh, right. case we get broken down or lost. And she gave me her phone and her husband's phone. Which is great. Good. I have two phones. It's wonderful. Somebody will pick up. Nope. So we're in the <laughs> parking lot and we're like, hey, uh, we don't know where to go. Because right. we have to load all this equipment on a dolly. Plus... She wanted extras for the show, uh, which doesn't which fit on the dolly. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I designed a trick for her. Do- I love them. I-, I designed a trick for her daughter, which is another trick that doesn't fit on the dolly. That's going to be three trips at least to the car. But if we can park close, it'll be real easy. Right. Where are you? So Where are to- you in this huge, humongous park? Right. We wanted to ask her, like, do we park in the parking lot and walk? Is that the closest? Or is there closer parking somewhere that we can get? And, and not walk as far. And so I called her phone a couple times. I called her husband's phone a couple times. I called her back a couple times. I sent her a message. <laughs> and we finally got in touch with her. And there was closer parking than the parking Was it parking. 15, 20, 30 minutes? How long were we waiting? Uh, Probably 10 to 15 minutes. It seemed like forever. Well, you know me. I yeah. get all anxious anyway. I, I just want to go. He was, about, he was like, well, we're just going to park here. I'm going to unload. And when she's ready, I'm like, Wes. This park is huge. She could be a mile on the other side of the park. Then you're going to have to reload the car. And you already paid for parking. And you wasted that. Now you're going to leave and have to pay for parking somewhere else. I'm like, don't. It, just wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't like just sitting there. If I'm unloading and loading the dolly, at least I'm doing something. Right. But you were going to. And, and I was right. You would have had to load it I would have had to load it back in. in and park over there. Right. But anyway. Uh. The family was really sweet. Everybody was really sweet. We got to meet uh, his parents as well. They were sweet as they could be. Yeah. Um, heck, they all they enjoyed even... the show. They had a great time. So. Yeah. Sorry. Heck, no, I was going to say that Lana even somehow got a tip at that show. Oh, yeah. She did. She was so excited. Yeah. It was the um, the dad's mom. Yeah. Gave her a tip. Um, yeah. That was so sweet. I told her. I said, I saw that. That belongs to me. <laughs> she just laughed. She she didn't buy it for a second. Nope. She's um, keeping it. <laughs> but after that, so we left the kids at home, and yeah. it's two and a half hours north. Yeah, a little over two. Yeah, probably. Because we were late starting, because it usually takes us five minutes to set up, it probably took us 30 minutes to set up, because we were trying to figure out what can we do, how do we do it down. in a windstorm. Right. I don't have enough people of bodies of just dead weight to hold equipment down. Right. It was, it was rough. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been doing magic for 30 years. This is the second windiest show I've ever performed in. And I don't know. I always ask Natalie and some people would think it'd be rude, but Natalie knows me by now. Was it you or another girlfriend that was working with me in that parking lot of that apartment complex that it was so windy and so miserable? You don't remember that. It was an apartment complex out in a... No. We were just in the middle of the parking lot. Don't remember that. So that was pre-you. So that's 20 Probably, years ago. Yeah. Was the windiest show next to this one. Because you haven't dealt with high wind like this before. You've had windy days. I've had windy days. But nothing like this. Yeah, I think this was the windiest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this was the second. But, and that's what we tell people. Outside shows sound great. But if a bee comes near, the whole front row at the farm... <laughs> Yeah. You're outside. It's a farm. There's a bee going around. Okay. All right. All right. There's a fly. Ooh, a spider. Ah. Yeah. Outside shows, you just have all these distractions. 
I could be doing amazing things. Natalie could be levitating, but if they see a spider, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Outside yeah. shows are rough anyway. Right. Um. Anyway. But we made it work. Everybody was happy, so we're good to go. As long as they're happy, I consider that like a a C minus D show. It was. I mean, my tricks worked. Everything worked. It just didn't feel good. It didn't feel professional. Yeah. It did not feel professional at all. Um, I, and I have another story. I think I've told this on the podcast. I'm not 100% sure, though. I think it was you that was with me when we did the show. We completely set up outside of the people's back deck. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then, and then they were like, all right, guys, it's time for the show. And this was a kid's show, family show. And they were like, oh, it's too cold out here. I'm like, I have another show after this. I can't take all this down, reset the show in your living room. Well, it'd be good right over here. We, lady, you told me to sit up here. Seriously, I have to go. I have another show after you. Another family's waiting on me. <sighs> okay. All right, kids, sit at the screen door. And they all sat at the sliding door. And the parents pulled up chairs behind it. And I performed. Watch through the door. <laughs> I performed at their house. And when I needed a volunteer, they'd open the sliding door, send a kid out. <laughs> Close the door. I do the trick because they can hear me fine. Yeah. <laughs> they throw them back in. Yep. I was out in the cold the whole time. Yep. It wasn't yeah. my idea to set up outside. It was mom's no, idea to set up outside. That's what they wanted. And, it, and the temperature just dropped drastically because it was getting towards evening. But we had a later show that evening as well. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was in show the fall. Business. It was in the fall. It was, pro it was probably an October or so show. And... It was a nice day, but then you get to the point where the sun starts to go down, and so does the temperature. And so, yeah, <sighs> that was interesting. Was Lana alive then? No, she it, wasn't with You us. were inside nice and I cozy warm. I was inside warm. because I was making balloon animals, and she told me to go make balloon animals indoors so that they wouldn't pop in the grass and everything. It and was so, just me in the cold. Yep. Where were we happened. talking about before I got on that? So uh, we had the show. We had all that. Then we yeah. had to go... And take Lana. But yeah. why did I get on that tangent? Just okay. another crazy wind. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And that was a funny story. Yeah. Them performing at the house. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, that show in Northern Virginia was midday. And then Lana's ballet is on Mondays. And that starts at 445. And that's in Richmond. And um, so we could make it. it. We had enough time. Um, I had looked it up beforehand. But then we were running late. And I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. But it was okay because we had extra time. So um, we went all the way to Richmond and got her all set. And it was funny because I, I wait in a little waiting room. I take her chair flash dropper off and I wait in a little waiting room. It has nice, cushy, comfortable chairs. And Wes came in with me and decided he was going to sit in there. And he's like, I'm going to get some work done. And he gave up about three minutes into the hour long class and said, never mind, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I don't think I made it three minutes. And he went out. He slept for the entire class. I don't understand how you can sleep there. I don't. I mean, I was tired. I was ready for bed at that point, but I, I can't sleep, and I would wake up too much. There was a sleep. room behind me, and some guy was like hammering something, like just really banging, really loud, really hard. And I woke up, and you weren't even there. Oh, that must have happened then. So I was like, oh, up. well. And I just rolled over the other side and just closed That's my yep. So sleep. that happened because there was no banging when I was in the room. Somebody yeah. did something. I no, it was totally it was Lana. totally happening. And I looked up and you weren't there. Yeah. It all happened and you weren't there. Yeah. That, yeah. That was, I was gone to get Lana. How long were you gone to get Lana? Well, I used the bathroom. I think I was gone a grand total of about three minutes. So I woke up, heard that sound, looked around, you weren't there, and I fell back asleep in three yeah, minutes. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. And came back in and woke you up and headed home. But yeah, it was a long day, but I didn't want Lana to miss ballet if she didn't have to miss ballet, because she is absolutely loving it. She comes out every week. She comes out and she's all sweaty, but she's got a big old smile on her face. And it's, I love it. I'm so happy. Well, the lady asked uh, when she booked it, you know, uh, do you have anything else going on the day? I'm like, we got ballet, but we can miss that. That's what's cool about this class. If she misses one for a show, she doesn't have to make it up. It's not going to be that big a deal, whatever. Right. And then we found out that we could do both in the same day. It's like, that's golden. Nobody right. even loses anything. That's right. great. Let's do it. Yeah. So. So, yeah. 
Anyway. She was glad she could make ballet class. Um, she, she loves it. She's loving it, loving it, loving it. So we're recording this on the 15th of October. Mm -hmm. And we ordered costumes late this year. Usually we have costume ideas ready to rock and roll. Place the order as soon as we get home from vacation. This year I felt like we waited. Did we? Two weeks into Halloween. I don't know. No, we, right now is two weeks into Two weeks October. into October. I said Halloween. We got them last week, so. Yeah. Well, all except for Willows. Willows is supposed to get here by now. Willows might be outside right now. Yeah, it could be. But, yeah. So, this year we are going to be... Dun, 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 Wesley? DC characters. Woohoo! So, um, the boys... Uh, all right, so Lana is going to be... I'm looking up Amazon right now. So what, is Lana's, what is Lana's name? She is Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. There you go. I'm like, Joker's girlfriend, but I couldn't remember the name. She's Harley Quinn. She got her outfit, and we're like, try it on, because, you know, if you try it on, it doesn't fit. We have time to return it and get you a different one before Halloween. So go, try it on now. And she tried it on. She came downstairs. She looks so cute. It's, oh, I love it. She looks really good in her costume. So... And then the boys' costumes came, and Lex is going to be Superman, and Julian is going to be Flash. And, um, oh no, the costume's running late. Willow's costume is running late. Uh-oh. That's not good. Halloween. That's never good. That means that you're not getting it. You'll get the sometimes, refund. Sometimes, sometimes not. Willow was supposed to get hers tonight, but well, go she'll ahead. Have to, she'll have to look up a different costume just in case, because we can't order from the same people if it didn't show up. Anyway, um, so the boys are going to be, Lex is going to be Superman, and Julian's going to be Flash. And we put their costumes on them, and they were so excited. And they're showing muscles, and they're running around, and they're just, oh, they love it. I'm like, this is great. So, Superman, right? My son, all my kids are named after Superman. Right. Uh, Julian Clark, mm -hmm. uh, Alexander, Lex, right? Right. And um, Lana. Even Julian came from Superman, right? Julian Clark and Lana came from that. But I wanted Julian Clark to be Clark Kent with the glasses and the Show and the me. shirt that he's getting ready to rip it off, right? Mm -hmm. And Natalie didn't think he'd keep the glasses on, and we couldn't find this for little kids. We could only find that for bigger kids, right? And then you wanted Lex to be Lex, Lex Luthor. Luther. They could I couldn't find a kid's Lex Luthor outfit. They you don't. can't find an adult Lex Luthor outfit. Apparently nobody wants to dress up like Lex Luthor. Which I guess you just go and buy a suit and a bald cap. Right. But... Yeah. But there's other versions. I wanted to be I wanted to be Bizarro Superman, because I've already been Superman before, so I'd be Bizarro Superman. There's no costume for that either. No bizarro costume. And we looked everywhere, not just on Amazon. We looked at Halloween costume sites and regular costume sites. And, and we have so many shows this month. It's not costume like costume I could be sites. a cosplay guy and spend 80 hours making a costume. I don't have time this right. month. So it's like I kind of need to buy something store bought off the shelf. So, all right. For some reason, just Julian's just a little bit scrawnier, a little bit. He's the smaller of the two. Yeah. But he's a little bit skinnier and taller. Is he taller, too? Supposedly, at the doctor's office. Yeah, I, I see it. I see it. Do I... you? Yeah. I mean, he's just... That yeah. didn't used to be the case. Jordan oh, yeah. Was the shorter one. But, but I one. see him as the Flash. I don't know. I see him as that. And I'm like, all right, well, let Lex have a turn to be the Superman. Yeah. You know? The other kid's got the name Clark, and he's always Lex. He's always the bad guy, Lex. Give him Superman to... Let him be Superman. And let Julian be Flash. Let let Julian be Flash. And we put that hood on Julian, and he adjusted his eyeballs, and he took off running around the house like he knew that character. And it's like, yeah. what? And I've showed him some cartoons, but I didn't realize they knew them. Yeah. And Lex was so, he, he was so excited. He was like, I'm Superman? I'm Superman? You're Superman. Look at my cape. <laughs> Mommy, yeah. look. Yeah. Superman. He showed his, his muscles. Oh, it's so adorable. It's so fun. This age is so fun. So, so fun. Well, him keeping that cowl on, him keeping that... Yeah, that, I was wondering. But he... Perfectly keeping it on. Not yeah. adjusting it, not messing with it, not, not fiddling with it. Not it off, yeah. Just keeping it's it on. his costume. Yep, yeah. yep. They love it. So, um, so anyway. Exciting. I, I love that they love it. 
I had to settle on the Joker. No. No, the, the Riddler. Riddler. The Riddler. Mm -hmm. I have been Scarecrow so many times in my career, in Halloween, different things. Yeah, I was that a, made him to be Scarecrow with, uh, or Wizard of Oz, me being Dorothy and him being Because Scarecrow was Dorothy's favorite. Uh, hold it, microphone up higher. You're making it go I am lower. Not, I not. I've been holding it here. You went like this. He's my favorite. Anyway, the favorite was lower. The favorite was quiet. You'll hear it on the podcast. I'm trying to get her to Maybe have a microphone in her hand. Dorothy's favorite. And there you go. Down like that. Okay. I need to move the microphone. So, so uh, where was I going? Where was I going? I, I love I love scarecrows. I I like scarecrows. Like I have when I go Halloween shopping, if I see a little scarecrow, cutesy little ornament or something. I like it. I like. I was starting to collect scarecrows for a while. I like scarecrows. I think they're neat. They're cute. I was, um, I was a scarecrow at this farm that I'm working at when I was before I met Natalie. During the day for those kids, when I was at that farm in early 2000s, they had me dress up as a scarecrow during the day to entertain the kids. They wanted me to be a wizard. I wasn't gonna be a wizard, but it's Halloween. I can dress up. I'll be a scarecrow that does magic. Yeah. So I was Fred the Magic Scarecrow. And um, I even took that to this farm I'm working now, 20 years ago. I don't do a scarecrow anymore. No. But, um, and then Natalie had me do that. But I, so I wore the makeup and dressed as a scarecrow and the yeah the stuff coming out of my sleeves and coming on my neck and you feel it and it's rubbing all day long. The Not the burlap, it's the, the hay straw, and the straw. Yeah. And, but one of my favorite characters on Batman is probably the scarecrow. He psychologically gets in your head and sprays that stuff, gets your worst yeah. fears to come out. He's cool. Yeah. But I didn't want to be a scarecrow. Even with that mask. I didn't. And that and she's and like we with looked the, it up. And she's like with the mask, you have to wear a mask all night yeah, long. You and mask you're, all the way over you're gonna eat with it and you gotta take people on this on the trails with it and it's not right. gonna be fun. Right. All right, all right. What else can I be? The Riddler's cool. I'll be the Riddler. So that's how I settled on the Riddler. I wanted to be Bizarro, but I settled. You look good as a Riddler. He's I got settled. the hat and the little mask and the gloves and the suit. The mask green. isn't fun. The mask cuts into my nose. I might just paint green. Okay. I might get um, lazy and just paint green. Okay. Whatever. Anyway. This one over here. She has them, uh, I don't know, birthing hips? Is that what you say? I don't even think that that's the reason. I went back on the thing and looked at the reviews, and there was a lot of people that said, oh, he's not covering my booty. Okay. All yeah. right. There you go. I just thought it was your hips that made it. Thanks, honey. Uh, well, I mean, hello. You can lose all the weight you want, but if you I'm have... I'm still going to have wide hips. Yeah. I so... Yeah. So I want to be... I am going to be Wonder Woman. And there but, are a but lot But the of... Amazon Wonder Woman had her butt hanging out. But it, she didn't. Not in that picture. The picture of the model has the, the, the skirt going down, like... Almost to her knees. I'm like, okay, this is cool. And it, I liked that one the best. They have some hokey ones that I didn't like. Ooh. And this one I liked. So I was like, well, I want I want this costume. And so I get it and I put it on. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I went downstairs because it says, yeah, it comes with shorts and a skirt. I'm like, why does it come with shorts? You can't see the shorts underneath. Look how long the skirt is. So I, I get the costume. Fits great. I understand why they want shorts, but these shorts are not shorts. It's more like underwear. Like, it's not... It doesn't go down like shorts. I went down to show Wes. I said, well, we cannot invite anybody from church if I end up wearing this because my butt is hanging out. Look at this. <laughs> it was not good. But I fixed it. Like, I fixed it. Was, it. it was... I, I don't want to wear that. I don't, I don't want to show my butt. That's just... That's too much. And so... Uh, Wes came up with the idea of just get some black leggings. Look, and he looked at pictures of Wonder Woman having black leggings. Like, That's perfect. Great. Great. Let's put on some black leggings. So we ordered black leggings. And but I saw other issue. people cosplaying with leggings on. Right. Yeah. And still having the skirt on underneath and everything, which is great. So there you go. I got myself some leggings. I'm not showing everybody my butt on Halloween, which is good because I don't want to show my butt. I'm not that. I don't. I don't dress that way. All right, so the last person you got is Willow. Yes, so Willow decided she's going to be Batman. She looked up Batgirl, but again, I don't blame her for not getting a Batgirl outfit because that 
they're horrible. It's not good. Bad well, if they were, if they were, if you wanted to be a sexy kitten, I think I well, think that's what they're woman. going for. No, sexy kitten, a sexy fat oh, girl. No, there were some. There were some of that, but then there I was thought that was her problem. Horrible, like just not good looking ones. And then I did, I did say, well, why don't you, do you want to be Catwoman? And um, she just didn't want to dress like that because a lot of them were overly sexy as well. So she's like, I'll just look up Batman ones. I'm like, okay. So she found a good Batman one and we ordered it and it was supposed to come today. And now it's not coming until the 19th, which is what? Saturday. So we'll see if it comes by then. I hope so. Cause it was a good looking costume. So I hope so. Otherwise we got to figure out something else. So, uh, Saturday, past two Saturdays, we did six shows on Saturday and three shows on Sunday at the Forum. Yeah. Extended hours for Saturday. And for some he's reason... extended his farm hours. And for some reason, Willow is exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Lana says, I don't know what she's doing. She's just sitting on TikTok. Why is it wearing her out? Yeah, but Willow has, worried. like, anxiety issues, crowds, and it is crazy busy. Yeah. And I don't understand any of that stuff. So if that really is the case, it was packed. Yeah. It was a lot of it's people. Been packed. So October started and bam, it was packed. September he had he was open the last two weekends in September and it was in it was decent. Decent crowds. And then October hit and it's just like, whoa. People are like, It's October, we're gonna go see pumpkins. And so <laughs> So she was saying that everybody was everybody was just exhausted and everybody had to go to the R V. So she packed everybody up in the RV and we got home and Lex started crying. Yeah. And he wanted to be at the farm. Yeah. So Natalie took his shoes off and said, all right, you can go in the living room and play and watch TV. No, I want to go to the farm. I want to go to the farm. So she put his shoes back on him and just sent him outside and he was tickled pink. He just yeah. wanted to continue playing. I said, fine, go. We are not. We can't go to the farm, but go. Go play in your sandbox. Go ride a bike. Go. See ya. Bye. Okay. And that made him happy. So, I he just, he wasn't ready to stop playing. They have a, it's so funny. The night before, uh, so Friday night, we told him they gotta go to sleep so you can go play at the farm again tomorrow. You're gonna play at the farm. Oh boy, blue slide? Because they have a blue playground. And apparently the slide's are favorite. I don't know. I say, yep, you can play on the blue slide. Oh, pumpkin slide? They have, they have these, tires that are painted orange and it has an orange little slide but they call it a pumpkin slide because it's all orange i was like yep you can go play on that too i'll tell willow you want to go to the pumpkin slide and I'll, but you gotta go sleep okay and they both went to sleep and <laughs> it's just funny those are the, i think those are the two main places they stick to well um, it's also close to us and ready right it's to, in order to bring them back to do yeah. the final battle and everything um but i think lana got them to go a little further at one point, she complained enough to Willow, can we please go out somewhere else? And I guess Willow got tired of hearing it, so they went out somewhere else. But well, it is... I, and I told Lana, I said, you're 12, you have a cell phone, you can go. She's like, I know, but I want to go with my brothers. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. But it is exhausting. Those, those six shows outside in the heat. In the heat, in direct sunlight. We we have the sun shining right on us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's brutal. It fries your brain. By but the end of the day, you can't think. I mean, I told Wes, somebody came up and asked me about, I was selling after the show. We sell a few things and there was a magic coloring book and somebody said something about the coloring book. What does that do? I asked a question what about the coloring do? book and I said, oh, did you, were you at the show? Did you see him demonstrate it? And she said, I guess no or something. I said, okay. So the coloring book, what you do is you had to put off. I have no idea what came out of my mouth. It was not English. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. My brain's fried. Let me try that again. <laughs> and then I was able to explain it correctly. I don't know what happened. I had a mini stroke or something. I, <laughs> I don't know. But just non-English came out of my mouth. And I was like, wow, that was, that was interesting. I, it's, your brain gets fried being out in the sun like that all day. It's crazy. And then I'm leaving there, taking, like, Pied Piper taking everybody to launch candy. Right. And Lana comes, helps do that. And that's fun. Right. But it's a lot of work, because that's even more running. So I'm averaging, I think, eight or nine miles a day at the farm. Hey, getting your movement in. I'm getting movement in. I'm yeah. getting movement in. And yeah. I'm getting paid for it. Yeah. Um, Talk about the boys and everything. 
Light's got his new medicine. Yes. So he has, if you didn't listen to the last couple episodes, Lex, we figured out he has intestinal migraines. So just every once in a while, he will just start puking. And we've never heard of that either. No. So the doctor was like, kids that get it usually outgrow it at a certain age when they get a little older. Until then, I will prescribe him Zofran. And when he starts feeling bad, you just give him some of that and he won't puke. Like, okay, awesome. So um, it took a minute to get the prescription. So in the meantime, he had an episode and I felt so awful that we didn't have the medicine yet because he was just dry heaving because it happened after we got up in the morning and he hadn't eaten anything since the day before. But oh, the poor guy, it's horrible seeing him go through it. But we had the medicine and last night was the first night that I had to use it. So he was trying to put them to bed and trying to get them to sleep. Julian fell off to sleep, but Lex would not go to sleep. I'm like, buddy, it's time to go to sleep. Okay. But then he just started kind of tossing and turning and rolling over a lot. And I'm like, what's going on? And then he kind of gave me this sad, scrunched up, frowny face and started going, Ugh. and that's the first sign that he don't feel good. So I was like, does your belly hurt? Uh-huh. You need the bucket bucket. Cause we have a little hospital bucket. It's from the hospital from when you were sick. Yeah. So we, we just bring that to him. Um, so I ran and got that in his medicine. I said, all right, you can take a little medicine. He's like, okay. And he took it great. And then we just kind of sat <laughs> Julian sleeping through this whole thing. And we just sat on the bed with the bucket between us and looked at each other for a little bit. And he just sat there. <laughs> and then I was like, a few minutes later, I was like, you want to try and lay down? Okay. So we laid down and he kind of tossed and turned a little bit. But then about 10 minutes later, he was starting to settle. And I was like, your belly feel better? And he gave me a huge beaming smile and nodded yes. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad. And I was like, oh, good. Okay, let's go to sleep now. He's like, okay. And he was out within like three minutes. So it was his belly keeping it up. And it just didn't hit him hard enough for him to start complaining and tell me that he needed a bucket until later on. But so. the doctor didn't call the prescription in the first day. Right. Then we asked him to call the prescription in. Then they called in the liquid instead of the stuff that melts on the tongue. Right. And then they only gave us like an ounce. They right. gave us nothing. Not much. Yeah. But hopefully, and I told, we told him, you know, this can happen a couple times a week. And then it'll happen, you know, two to three times a week for a couple weeks. And then we'll have a week off. And then it'll happen a couple more times. And then you may get three weeks off. So, I mean, there's no refills on it. So we got to call the doctor when we need a refill. But it so is weird. what it is. Yeah. So anyway, but it works. And I was so glad. I'm so glad. Because I feel so bad for him when he's going through it. Um, we got a couple more subjects before we wrap everything up. Okay. We did a senior citizen living home mm -hmm. for senior citizen nursing home. I don't know what it was for Halloween, whatever. And the boys got to help out for the first time. They actually got to do magic in the show. Yeah. It was so sweet. So we did it at the farm just for fun. It was after the show. You know, nobody's sitting down watching, but people were in line for food and saw it and clapped. But it wasn't meant to be that. But Wes just got him to come up and say, abracadabra, and pop a balloon and make a bird appear. Lana has been doing that for years um, at the beginning of the show. So we were like, oh, he did so good. He was so excited. They were so excited that he did it. And so we were like, well, let's do that. To the them, show. it's real magic. They're doing it. Right. They, they don't know how they're doing it, but they're right. doing it. It's amazing. They say abracadabra, and all of a sudden, and they go like this. They wiggle their fingers, and, and a bird appears. And they just think it's awesome. So we're like, all right, let's do it at the retirement community because they love kids. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you do. They love kids. Kids will take over the show. You can do the best show in the world. Your, our kids come up. That's it. That's all they want to talk about is kids. So we're The like, lady that hired us, the, the manager lady, I said when Lana was a baby, we used to let her walk around after the show, let people pet the bunny and my daughter. Right. Just... And she's sweet. Yeah. I mean, they really would brush yeah, your hair or sweet. tuck your hair. Yeah. So, yeah. So we knew even if they messed up horribly, 
Nobody at this show would care. It's the perfect show to try it out for the first time. And they did great. They were so excited to get up there. And they were like, abracadabra, abracadabra, abracadabra. Ah! They were just as excited as everybody else to see the bird. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to narrate it like I do Lana's and try to talk through but the setup. Too long. But they are ready to go. As soon as Willow released the hounds, right. they were surrounding that. Abracadabra, abracadabra, abracadabra. Wait. They don't want to wait. They want to wait. So now I know that in my head, I have to script around them. Yeah, you got to speed it up. No, I have to script around them. Right. Because Willow kind of releases early for the bow. So I've had to change that. Yeah, well. Like, I just have the bunny. This is Binks, and they're on the stage. They are ready. They're ready. They're excited to do their part. I don't even get the chance to say, well, if we're going to take a family bow, we got to do it right. Yeah. Here are my kids. No, it's, as I'm holding up the bunny, they're on my hip. Yeah. So anyway, that was that was fun though. So we're thinking um, we haven't done it at the farm at each show because it's six shows, at, multiple shows a day, and that'd just be a lot to up and down and up and down and up and down. But I think at um, and for Willow and for scheduling because yeah, they're running around. Right. If it was just a show, they would be in the back of the room. They come up, they know right. their parts. That's what I'm saying. I, I think we can start putting that them in the show for that part at regular shows. That's not at farm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, you have been filling my magic orders. Mm-hmm. Can you, I sold a business this week. Mm-hmm. Can you tell everybody how good my magic shop's doing? It's taken off pretty good. Gets, you know, a few orders at least a week, if not more. Yeah. It's, that's good. It's rocking and rolling. It used to be very sporadic, like maybe one a month and then maybe you'd get one every other week. Now, if you don't get one in a week, it's like, what happened? So, yeah. If I, yeah, yeah. I would be surprised if you didn't get at least one during a week. But last week, we had how many orders? Three seven. or four. I was going to say seven. Oh, really? Okay. Honey, I had to take all that stuff to the post office. Okay. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's rocking and rolling. It's doing We're great. doing like an order a week. No, I didn't say that. It used to be that way. If we didn't get an order for a week, I would be shocked, is what I said. You're not hearing me. What I'm saying is, go to magiciansmagicshop.com. And for all look. your magic needs. I'm putting new stuff up there every single day. My wife is poo-pooing my business I am here. not poo-pooing. I'm saying it is growing by leaps and bounds. I said, if you didn't get an order, I would be shocked. Perfect. Next Golly topic. Golly day. Uh, we're running... We're running out of time, but I just want to thank you guys for writing in to us. And if you have something to tell us, if you want to share a message with us, please reach out. If you want a health coach, reach out. Please. Um, whatever. If you want to email whatever. us, reach out. But I love that you guys reach out. Thank you. Keep it up. Since last week's episode, I've had people tell me, that their daughter also, every time she goes into a Christmas shop, has to go poo. <laughs> that was comforting. You're not alone in that, Natalie. Yes, I'm not alone. You're not alone in that. There's another person out there. That's awesome. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for reaching out. And another person said, well, at my age, anytime you just mention the bathroom at all, I have to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so at least you'd only have one place uh... where... Yes. Yes, Wesley. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anyway, guys. all my business can be out there for everybody. Tomorrow. Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap everything up. Uh, now, that was if we ever do a, an episode where we've gone to a Christmas show, everybody will know that the cameras were turned off at one point so that I could go use the bathroom. Golly, can you imagine, <laughs> like, you know, uh, Bush Gardens Christmas hires us? <laughs> oh, dude, I didn't have an issue of Bush Gardens Christmas when we went. Okay. Yeah. All right. It wasn't a Christmas store. It has to be a Christmas store enclosed, apparently. Stagnant air. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's today's show, guys. It was supposed to be Dave McGee, but we had to fill it in. and I oh, think we did pretty we good. on next week. I think we did pretty good filling it in. I think so, too. We caught you up. We got you taken care of. Yeah. Only thing we have left to say is uh, see, see you, you next, next week. week. Check us out online at WesIsley.com and Patreon.com forward slash Wes 
underscore Isley. For behind the scenes videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. -S -E